What's going on guys? Patrick here and welcome back to another video. Today is something special here. This is a brand new series that we're going to be putting on together. This is a new video podcast that we're going to be doing. And the goal of this is that we're going to be able to talk to other industry leaders and industry authorities and people that are just basically interesting in the industry. Um, and just being able to sit down Joe Rogan style, coming at you, um, trying to get some information on who people are, what they do. And then at the end of the, uh, at the end of the interview, more of a, uh, of an educational portion. I don't even know if I told you that or not. Um, but, but, uh, so basically the format's going to be that we're going to go, uh, into who I'm interviewing. And then the second part is going to be a little bit of more education and back and forth, like maybe something that, that they've learned that they can teach you. The format is very loose right now. This is the first one we're doing, and as we're growing, we're gonna we're gonna start to mold it as best as we can. So, without further ado, my my person, my first person, my one of my good friends, Mr. Martin Fowler. What's going on? And you say first episode. Are you not gonna release the one with Nina? No, I'm not allowed oh, to. How no. dare you? <laughs> So for the guys, you guys clearly don't know. Um, I had to do a test series on all this, and um, and. I did one with my wife and she just, she's not into it. So, so I, she's like, as long as you're not recording and you're not, you're not uploading it, I'm, I'm totally okay with it. I'm like, okay. If I had her number, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be, uh, Hey, listen, <laughs> between we, we were not discussing things that can, that could be published. So, doesn't so matter. Doesn't matter. she knew we weren't going to be publishing it. So she's like, she's like saying out oh, this outlandish shit to know that I wouldn't publish it. And I'm like, okay, thank you. I That's exactly it. why. <laughs> I'd be curious, and I think your community would be curious to see it. No, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about you, <laughs> Mr. Martin Fowler, uh, owner, operator of Alligator Window Tent here in Claremont. Yes, based in Claremont. Based in Claremont, excuse yeah. me. Currently, I'm mobile, so I kind of, Claremont, Orlando, really anything that's within an hour in any one direction of my house. Um, I used to travel a, quite a bit further. I've tried to rein that back in as fuel and time well, my time is starting to get more valuable and then fuel is coming in more to it's, cost. And so I'm trying to rein that in a little bit and then next year I'll have a, a brick and mortar location. So then I'll actually be located in Claremont versus okay. like based in Claremont because that's where I live. Are you going to stay? You are going to be, a brick and mortar is going to be in Claremont. Correct. Okay. Uh, about uh, three, four miles from my house. Okay. So not easy, easy commute. That and currently as of, I mean, what is this? August of... 2021 currently there's no expel dealers in claremont so i'll be mm. as of right now i'll be the first the exclusive oh. claremont expel dealer I, I mean claremont's a blown up area so i mean i'm not going to be the only guy for too long but <laughs> um you know my reps got my location as far as the gps coordinates because they haven't laid the slab yet okay okay so there's not a physical address to do the five mile territory mm -hmm. from i got gotcha, you i got gotcha. but he knows the location of it but I come from the belief, I, I very Gary V, but also since I've been involved with Obsessed Garage, I'm very Matt Mormon into quote Matt. There's no competition. There's only people that do what you do. So if you were to open up a shop two and a half miles from me, that doesn't really phase me because I don't view that as competition. It's only you're doing something that I also do. I look at it like if, for example, if we were both in financial services, Mm -hmm. And I worked for Chase Bank and you worked for Wells Fargo. And I run into you at the bar. You know what I know. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, oh, you work Wells Fargo and, and I'm Chase. And all of a sudden we're going to have drinks all night. Yeah, right. And it doesn't matter that your bank is literally across the street from mine. It doesn't matter. However, with window tenders, it's like I have to hate you all of a sudden because you use solar effects and I use Xbell and your shop is right over there. Why? Your marketing strategy is different. Your business is different. Everything about what you do is different. So I don't view that as competition. I view that as just someone else that does what I what do. What you do. I mean, I guess. Same, but different. Right. I guess teach at the 10 school. I can't tell you how many people since it's located in Jacksonville. I've taught people that are opening businesses in Orlando where I'm frequently at. <laughs> I just don't think that that affects my business. Okay. The way that I market is different. For example, Ford of Claremont, the Ford dealership near me, before all the craziness that happened this year with the car market, sell in between five and 700 cars a month probably. 
Well, I can't tint that. No, way too many. Never there's mind. A, there's a lot of pie to be had. Never mind all the other dealerships. Never mind all the fancy stuff that's over in Orlando. Never mind used cars. So if I can't handle what one dealership does, why am I going to be mad at some other shop? They're going to them for their reason. Maybe they go to them for price. Maybe they go to them for the brand, the film that they use. Maybe they know the owner. Maybe they follow the tinter because he's worked at four other shops and they're loyal to him. Maybe they like my YouTube content. Maybe they like the way that I market. Maybe they found me through Obsessed Garage or maybe they found me through you know, a friend of the family or a referral or word of mouth. It's, I really only want the person that's right here with me because business is an excuse to be in relationship. So the people that want to be in relationship with you will be, and the people that don't, don't. Some people don't want mobile. Some people don't want brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. Right? I've lost jobs because I'm mobile, because they want to come to a location. I don't have that yet. Right. And I'm sure when I transition to doing more brick and mortar, I will lose some people that prefer mobile. You will. But in the whole, you'll be able to do more, right? And so it's You'll lose some, you'll you. gain some, but everybody's got their <laughs> preference. You can't you can't control what you can't control. Right. You're two years in. Three. Three years in, excuse just me. You're starting my, three? Just hit my three year anniversary on August. Now three years, that that's three completed years. Or is that or starting three? I, I, oh the anniversary thing, I'm gonna be honest with you, the anniversary thing always throws me off. I opened my doors for business August fifteenth, two thousand eighteen. Eighteen is when I okay. opened my doors okay. for business. Okay, so three years. Yep. I just hit three completed years. Congratulations. Thank you. It's been a nutty ride. A roller coaster? A tad bit. The the lowest point was this past winter for this sure. Past winter. Yeah. The winters are hard. Uh, not that. Um, so since we're all tenors and if people work on cars and tell you they've never damaged anything, uh -huh. they're lying to you because right. we've all made mistakes. The way in which I handle my mistakes cost me quite a bit more. Also, the, a lot of the cars that I work on can cost you quite a bit more. And I had, of course, Murphy's Law, the way the dice fell, the way the cookie crumbles. I had three that hit all in the same month. Of course. And of course. And the slowest month of the year, I'm sure. Oh, of course. They all came due in October. Mm. Perfect, perfect timing. <laughs> right. And then that credit bill card bill came due in November. Right before Thanksgiving oh, oh, and Christmas. hundred percent. Sorry, and, sorry, honey. No Christmas yeah, this year. And yeah. So like the whole nest egg that I had for the winter was gone in fixing smoked. in fixing three cars. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's the downside to working on Porsches. <laughs> downside to working for yourself. Oh it's, yeah, that it's, too. As a as a, a solopreneur, yeah. right? It's like yeah, something like that. It's difficult, right? Because there's extreme highs and extreme lows. I'm mm -hmm. like at the very cusp of it, right? Like going solo on my own, like about two months ago. Right. You know, and I've called you on numerous occasions. I'm like, what the fuck do I do, bro? Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm losing that, my mind. What am I gonna do? The the one whoopsie that you called me about that that's not public, and I was like, welcome. Oh, welcome to the welcome to that stress, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> been there. Yeah. If you guys don't know, um, Matt and I, Matt. Wow, there's a lot of Matts. There is Martin. Martin and I are actually very good friends. Martin randomly showed up at one point uh, when I was over at an at a previous two previous shops ago, just out of the blue. Two and or three previous shops ago. Yeah. It was the one you were at for like four or five years. Yes. And yes. what it was, remember I told you I used to go a lot farther? Yes. So, so the reason I was in that area was for an obsessed garage follower drove down from Maryland to have me tint their car. Okay. Which is nutty. Like that. It's insane. Doesn't make sense. Maryland. To me. Like, there's so many good window tinters between here and Maryland. <laughs> but whatever reason, he wanted me to tint his car. He has family close to that particular location. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that he drove down here for me. It's that I'll wait until I'm already going to be down there visiting family. And then I'll just have you tint the car at their house. And I knew I was somewhat near where you had said that you had been. Mm -hmm. You've provided me a ton of value with your video content, tips, tricks, things like that. Um, we talked about that with the portion we did earlier mm -hmm. where like the quarter window, that trick saved me so many redos. <laughs> so it was like, oh, well, I'm right by the shop. I'll stop by. I'll say hi. Thank you. You know, and then I'm just a crazy person. Now, you mentioned 
You may, I, like, like I said, I don't have any format for this. Like, we're, we're growing and we're doing it as we go. And we're, I'm gonna at, learn. we're at my favorite restaurant drinking wine. And yeah. so that's th- another th- thing. Th- talk about unformat. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, so part of the fun of the live stream, guys, is that the, I, I have a completely independent and I, I don't need any power sources. Now, granted, there are some power sources around here, but the fun part about this live streams is that I can literally do this anywhere. And that's the goal. I don't want to be like in a dingy office or shop. Everyone's seen that with the crappy blah, blah, blah. So we're at Seasons 52 having yep. having a bottle of Cayman. This is our second bottle of K-Miss. K- yep. Excuse me. Yep, yep. Apologize. Because and- I can be a little bit of a bougie person okay. when it comes to my wine selections. <laughs> and I... You know, this isn't something we do every day, and that's right. my favorite wine at my favorite restaurant, and I got paid for the car that we did earlier, so I figured <laughs> true, I'll true. buy the wine. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that, there is a live stream that we did, one of the first dual-action, multi-cam live streams, um, and then we ended up, I just ended up being his camera guy, because the goal, the idea was that we both were going to tint the car together, right? And then we just knock it out, right. like an hour. But then, like... Well, it's to be fair, it took less than two hours, and we redid the back window. Right. And that was me doing it by myself. By yourself. Right. So I, had you done the driver's side and I'd done the passenger side and you do the windshield and I do the back window, it would have been a 45 minute. I See, that was the thing. The idea was that we both knock it out together. I, I was going to do like this split screen, like I'm doing mine, you're doing yours. But I, I like in middle of it, I'm like, God, you know, everyone's seen me tint a window a hundred times, like yeah. my people. Right. So like, that's the purpose of like bringing other people in. Like, let's see how they do it. Like, right. how is it different? Uh, squirrel, literal, literal squirrel. Jesus. Sorry, <laughs> it really is a squirrel right there. I gotta wish the you guys ADD see is strong. With I you. mean, <laughs> it's squirrel. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> like a meme. One of those memes, like in real. Life. Stop it. <laughs> what was I saying? What was I, what were talking you were about? talking about how you were just ended up focusing oh, on, yes, on yeah, my yeah. process okay, yes, yes, because sorry. we've seen you tint. Yes, and yes. I refuse to take cars apart. I, you know, and here's the thing too: is like you had a camera, and everyone has that fr- that 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 POV shot, and and like I was just sitting and watching, and I realized like I have a camera strapped to my face, so I'm like, this is just like I might as well just be a camera guy, uh, right. because then I can you can talk and I can f- footage, and, and it turned out really. Well. I think it turned out really well. I mean, the I'll, card, I'll take your word for that. You the, do the a card. whole lot more filming than I do. <laughs> Normally, when I film, I have a videographer that's sitting with a gimbal and I, and, and I wish. I wish. No, me. But that cost me a lot of money. Yeah, I, I believe it. I believe it. Like <laughs> the the last video I did with the SF ninety, I paid my videographer more than that job paid me. <laughs> but it's worth it. Oh, 100%. it's investment. Investment. Well, it. So when when I produce a video or pay a videographer to come with me, I only do. Either something very expensive, very flashy, brand new body style that's going to have some hype with it. I've got a couple irons in the fire on on the brand new Broncos coming out. The big ones, not the baby ones. Correct. The the real one, not the half of one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sorry if anyone has a sport. (laughs) Or something that has a big enthusiast following. So for me, it's it's a marketing engine. So... For example, the SF90 that I did a video on, I wanted that documented, not because I care about doing a Ferrari. That means nothing to me. Glass is glass and tint is tint. Right. So I'm doing that car no different than I would do a C8 Corvette. However, it's for me, it's the trust aspect of it. Like, this gentleman trust me to tint his million-dollar car because it's got a shield and a horse. <laughs> that means more to my marketing than what the job paid or what I paid my videographer because I'll make all that money back. Do do you get, do you feel like there is, so here's my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Is that like, I don't try to touch Ferraris. I don't try to touch Lamborghinis because the liability in which something bad can happen. Now, not me. I trust myself. Oh, stakes are high. Right. Like there, you're, you're instantly in the red. If you break anything flat glass, you break one window, you replace that one window. You're You're still in the green. But you, even if it was the highest end film, how much could you charge a Ferrari? The best, best you have to offer, front, sides, back, everything. Let's say they had a sunroof. Max it out. I mean. $1,500? No. Less, more. No. $1,500 would be my best film on an SUV or pickup truck with panoramic sunroofs and, and all that. So, you know, the Ferrari, he only wanted the front two doors done. 
Right. Because he tracks that car. So he's like, I don't want the windshield done because it's probably going to break. Right. But the the high stakes on that one, that one is actually not as high stakes because the door cards on the SF90, or at least his, was solid carbon fiber. Yeah, but that's still a million dollar car. Yeah, but I'm not worried about my water consumption or the water sitting on the leather or Alcantara that True. it shouldn't be. Like, I'm not worried about how much water sitting on carbon fiber. Yeah. I'll tell you where I hate doing Ferraris is they're so tight to oh, get the e- film in the mm-hmm. seals that I use a little bit extra soap and then it takes way too long to dry. Mm. So that I have to like babysit it for a little bit so that when I go to untrick the windows, it, it doesn't. doesn't finger up. Yeah. My land, that's the worst. I'm sure there's tricks for that, but again, I'm three years in. I've done a handful of Ferraris at this point. I mean, I've done an SF90, a 488, a 550 Marinello. Uh, just did a Roma last week. So I've done a few of them. They're just so tight the way they put them together that I just use a little bit extra slip and then I have to babysit it for a little bit longer. And you don't find like the the, the risk, the liability versus the upswing? If you take I, if I you mean, take a dive on one, right? Oh yeah. You're you're in the red for probably four or five cars. Well, that's something, five grand. that's something I'm going to turn in an insurance claim. I'm not just going to handle it. Like, okay. It, yeah, but you can only do that a couple of times. Correct. People people have boobies. It's not an everyday. No, you're I've right. Done, so I've done a 550 Marinello, a 488, an SF90, and a Roma. So I've done four. So this is in not an everyday. Three, okay, yeah, right. Okay. This is okay. not an everyday. We're not thing. doing Okay, so the goal is not to get Ferraris and Lambos all day every day. No. no. Okay. It, or my, you would charge more. Well... I don't, I don't think you can because I charge for square footage of film used mm-hmm. on an average, not difficulty or expensive Quality of car. car. Okay. Right. Okay. So you don't I, screw people. I don't want someone feeling like I'm charging them more because they can afford a nice car. True. Okay. So I, I don't want that. I, to be blatantly honest, I don't want anything in my day-to-day wheelhouse higher end than Porsche. It The liability does get... Crazy. It, it gets up there. It's good. You pay attention more. Right. So, you know, like it, it's not like I'm sitting there, like, tinting, you know, spraying it down like it would a Silverado. It's not. <laughs> it, it, I'm not lick doing. Lick them and stick them. Right. But heavier slip, lighter water, manage it. The You just pay attention more. I mean, the stakes are higher. You know what I mean? You could be a great basketball player, but you go to game seven against Michael Jordan, you're, you're, you're you'd be stressed a little bit. The pucker factor is going to be <laughs> a little bit higher. <laughs> So why do it then? For, for accolade, for show? Just be like, I, little, I can? A little bit of that and a little bit of proving to myself that like, yeah. But do you need it? No. Does it's anybody? Successful. No. Uh, I, don't, I guess you're right. Everyone loves the boat. You don't right? need a Ferrari. <laughs> True. Like, in fact, speaking of Ferrari, the client I did the SF94, I also did his Model S Plaid. Okay. And I was laughing with him because he was like, yeah, the Ferrari is awesome, but... The Tesla that I paid one hundred and thirty thousand dollars for is faster than that Ferrari I paid over eight hundred thousand dollars for. <laughs> He's like, "That's faster." So you don't need it. The it's baller just, part about that particular client is he dailies the Ferrari. He does daily. See, that's what I love about people. I, I can't I told stand it. people that like it's like buying sea dues. Like people that buy sea. Like some people that like will buy a, a toy and they're like, "Don't use it because you don't want to break it." I grew up on a lake. You don't don't get me on that soapbox. Fucking break it. Use it to break it, and then you buy another one. That's if you can't afford to break it, don't fucking buy it. That's don't, that's my opinion. It has nothing to do with breaking. Don't get me on the soapbox of jet skis. <laughs> no, it, jet skis or water or what? Um, sea dues. Same thing. Different. It's similar. Okay. It, let's the, let's not veer off. Br- yeah, yeah. Don't don't get me on that soapbox. <laughs> But no, I, I told. I even told the client to his face. I was like, I'm more impressed with the fact that you daily it than the fact that you can afford it. I love it. I have a lot of clients that can afford that. But they don't daily it. Maybe they, weekend. It, it sits there. And they, and they, they, you they may take, as well buy art. Yes. It doesn't take up as much and space. And that guy, see, here's the thing. The Ferrari that dailies it is, he understands that shit ain't perfect and it is what it is. But the guy well, pays. He's, he's our age. Oh, good for him. Good for him. He He started a company that went nationwide and then he exited and the exit was big very well yeah very good for him i'll not mention the name good well, yeah good good for him but yeah he he cashed out and he's basically at this point very wealthy always been a car enthusiast and as of the past couple of years can now afford the cars he's always been enthusiasm about and he doesn't give a shit because he's got he's got the cheddar for it mm-hmm. nice and so now he uses the cars he's always want to use <laughs> 
Because <laughs> he's got he's got it now. Yeah. So I mean, that's the same client that I sent you the picture of when you were doing your podcast. Or your live stream. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. With the oh, auto stackers. God, I love those. Same guy. So I love those. That garage was on this side of the driveway. And then the there Ferrari. Multiple gar- garages. Yeah, he's got on each side of the driveway. There is a client from a previous shop. And I, this is how, like, I really, I don't, like, steal. And I don't, like, I, I, I would never slide my number. Like, yo, call me on the side. Right? right. And I was tinting this guy, these guys' Ferraris for years. Years. Like, he has got to... Three, four, four stacks. He's got four, two stacked on each other, mm-hmm. and then he gets he gets either the he he had a, a G wagon in there because oh, yeah. they were like going crazy for resale, and then he had a BMW like X yeah. X whatever series. So he's like he switches out every six months, but of he course. was building another garage, and I'm like, and I, oh, I, I hope he finds me. I hope he finds me. <laughs> yeah, but it, and so you know, I mean, when you work on cars like that, they just the, the biggest inconvenience is they fit tighter together. And the, the risk is higher. But glass is glass and tint is tint. But I can't really create a business off like, Ferraris. I only want to do Silverados, F-150s, and Dodge Rams. Like, I can't. <laughs> but you, you, you're I going would kill, after the average I, consumer. I would do unspeakable things to just put my middle and high-end series film on pickup trucks. Like, oh. My God. Oh. T- uh, truck Tuesday. That's oh. that's my thing. Every right day. Every, truck Tuesday. To hell with Taco Tuesday. <laughs> truck Tuesday. I used to, I was, I always told people two front Tuesday. I'm like, no, no, no. Truck Tuesday, bro. Truck yeah. Tuesday. Burn and turn, full size, sides and back, full size trucks, 30 minutes. Thank you, sir. Yep. 30 minutes. The fun part about <laughs> podcasting yeah. on location. It's the fun part about I'm paying the bill. Oh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I appreciate it. We no. did good. Hey, listen, we've been, we've I been got building, paid for the car. We got, we've been building content all day. Sending the car. Coming yeah. here, having some phenomenal flatbread, some good wine. Yeah, season's a good place. It's my like, favorite spot. I like this. I um, like this. Yeah, no, it, it, you know, but so to, to kind of go back to on track, the, the reason that I pay a videographer for those things is personally, I don't care how much money my client has. That, because that's their life, not mine. Right. I'm trying to build my brand, build my business. What I care about is that the visibility of making a video with a car such as that, where people say, well, if this guy who owns a car that costs in between 750 and a million, trust him, then I will trust him. Are you afraid that like, I don't, I, I, I own a 2021 Chevy Malibu. This guy tints Ferraris. He's way out of my league. I'm gone. Funny enough, I take many phone calls because I I generally only post pictures or video of highlightable cars, be it enthusiast, expensive, right, flashy. It's this, it catches the, people's attention. The new body style of this um, or the flashy that or the enthusiast following that because it's a attention grab. Right. So I actually take phone calls from a lot of people that are like, hey, you know, we just got a new Camry. Uh, you know, it's fully loaded. We'd, we'd love you to... Is that something that you'll even do? I do a ton of cameras. I do them all day. Do you, just, do you tell them, like, yeah, I do, but only in my high-end series? No, no, no. I tell them I do a lot of cameras. I just don't post about it because marketing only works one way. No one calls me to tint their Ferrari I because you, I... Because I saw the camera God, you did. You did such a good job on that Accord. <laughs> Could you please do my Lamborghini? <laughs> Said no one ever. Ever. Right. But, you know, you post a picture of a Huracan Evo Spider, and all of a sudden, everyone's calling you with their M3s. True. And and for better, for worse, I will say that to people. And I'm telling it's a marketing strategy. Right. And they go, oh, okay, that makes sense. And I always try to pick a car that they don't have. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I want to, like, inadvertently, like, shit on them. Yeah, Basically. for lack of a better way to say that, yeah. <laughs> but when you say that, it's more of a marketing tool just to show trust. They go, oh, that makes sense. So for me, that's where it's at. It's not, I don't care about 10 Ferraris. It's more of a worry than it is a excitement at this point. But, <laughs> right. but, but people that, need it. But if that guy trusts me to handle, and I mean handle, not just tint because you're spraying water You've got knives out. You might have to scratch a... There's a lot the, going on. Exactly. It, it, you're handling their car. Right. 
You're sitting on the Alcantara. You're doing surgery on their car, basically. More or less. But if he trusts me, it's the trust that matters to me, not the value of the car. Because, I mean, almost all of my clients make more money than I do. Right. So that's not... I don't care how much... Like, <laughs> that's not my life. Right. I just want to put stickers on windows and go home to my wife and kid. <laughs> I got so, I got a surprise for you, too. Uh-oh. You, you're going to... Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but when you that's see, a shit surprise. When you when you <laughs> when you see it, you will know what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. I'll I'll be on the lookout. It's going to be. That's just a, that's a bad surprise. Like, hey, I've got a surprise, but you, I can't. It's tell a you. surprise, and you're gonna and and I know I know you're gonna, you're gonna die laughing the second that it it comes upon you, okay. and um, it's going to be great. I can't wait, but. It, you probably within the next 24 hours. I okay. don't know when within the next 24 hours it like the universe will send you. Oh, did you start hiring? Uh, did you hire my website and SEO guy? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Cause no, you're no, far enough away from me. No, 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 no. There's a, there's a fun surprise. No, okay. it's nothing like that. It's more like it's a surprise for like for friends. Okay. Like friends, right. only friends would I'll, do this I'll, stuff. I'll, I'll be on the lookout. And then feel free to take a picture. Cause you're going to want it. Oh, yeah. I'll meme it. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, okay. So three years in. Yeah. Okay. You have found much more success, I would say, than a lot of people would have within the first three years. Um, I would say that's fair. Okay. How would you How would you tell people? Because there are some people that like want to get into this business mm -hmm. that have no clue how to do it. There's other mm -hmm. people that have been this in this in this business for 15 years mm -hmm. and don't even have the success, the momentum, the they don't have what you have. And okay. So, so what would you tell both those people, like in regards to how you run your business? And so, I I do get asked this decent, um, especially when I guest spot at the tent school. Okay. So when I say the tent school, I mean the window tent school in Jacksonville. Okay. Um, and you 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 learned everything. I'm involved there. with them. You yeah. started there. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. Okay. So and that's with John Dewar and Darren Fedick. Thank you. Yep. So, and I get asked this question there because John highlights me a lot as a success story. I'm not their well, only six. I'm, I'm not their only success story, but I think as young as I am into this, I'm their loudest <laughs> success story. A, mm -hmm. because I put out a lot of content, but then also I'm loud, but there's a lot of things that go with it. And I think if you take one thing away, the whole thing doesn't crumble, but it all, it's the sum of all things combined. So I started my business. I had resigned from Enterprise Rent-A-Car through a real long story. that That's a podcast in and of itself. <laughs> so I, I won't go there. But I had resigned from Enterprise Rent-A-Car in May, May 23rd of 2018. I, I turned in my resignation. And then didn't know what I was going to do. I had some irons in the fire with Penske Rental. Um, I had some irons in the fire with United Rental. A lot of places that are veteran-friendly management trainee program, care about the bachelor's degree, care about the veteran thing. 30 seconds. What's your background? Education-wise, things of that nature. So my my dad's a successful insurance agent. Okay. And I'll leave the company out of. And then my bachelor's is in business management, minor in human resources. Okay. And you're an ex-military. Ex -military. Yep. I was a cop in the Navy. Um, left as a paid E5. Um, for the Navy people, they know that I left as a paid E5, not a frocked E5. Which I have no idea what that means, but yep. I'm assuming it's a good thing. Your Navy people will know. So my, one of my very good friends, Jerry, uh, Jerry is um, is in the Navy. He's, he works with the uh, the Blue yep. Angels. So okay. keep going. That's keep going. that's a whole different thing. <laughs> so nevertheless, I had a few irons in the fire. Go to lunch with uh, my dad and my wife. Who my wife's in real estate property management, so she's been working for herself since 2008. She got into real estate in 2008. Oh. Like before bubble? It had to be before bubble because she wouldn't have gone in there after the bubble. I want to say it was after. I haven't asked her the specific timeline. but if like it was after the bubble, she's crazy. Okay. Well, okay. So even if it was before the bubble, then the bubble happens a couple months after you get into and it and still you in stay there? in. Okay. Yeah, she's right. crazy. So yeah, but either way, like she's frog a crazy in the person. water, right? Okay. She's and me. she's your wife. Right? She's a crazy so person. She's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So my dad's a bit entrepreneurial. Okay. Wife's a bit entrepreneurial. Okay. My dad's told me my whole life I should own my own business. Just because I always get in trouble for, I got in trouble for enterprise because I wanted to work too hard. Okay. They, they wouldn't let me. They're like, get off the clock. How old are you again? I am 38. 
are you, is that a question or a statement? I was born in 83. Do the math. Okay, so 30, 38. Okay. okay, so this was three years ago, so you're 35. Right. Okay, right, keep right. going. So I'm out to lunch um, for the first Saturday I've had off in, since I'd been home from the Navy. And I had kind of had a thought in my head, and my cousin has been tinting windows since he started his business in 2008. My cousin is an amazing window tinter, and, but I have a different theory on how he runs his business for how I'd want to run my business. Okay. So from a place of if he can do it, I can too. I told my dad, I was like, you know what I ought to do? Because I've always been the guy in high school that people call me like, hey, who, who'd you go to for this? Can you wash my car? Who's tinting your windows? You've got a guy for all this because you're kind of involved in the aftermarket session. Who should I do for my stereo? Where should I get my TV installed? Things like that. So I told my dad, I was like, you know what? If my cousin can support his family since 2008, tinting windows, I can kill it. <laughs> you know, because if I were to go into business with my cousin and he does things one way and I want to do things a second way and he says, hey, we don't do it like that here. We do it like this here. Well, he's not wrong. Because he's been doing it since 2008. Right. So he's been in business for, what, 15 years, roughly? So he's not wrong. He's absolutely correct. But. That doesn't make me incorrect. I see the market different. Right. So. Fresh I, eyes. Ignorant eyes. Uh, one and the same. Uh, okay. Well, I'm just <laughs> blatantly ignorant because I had never handled raw window film. I just knew I liked window film as a consumer. And okay. paid for high-end film. Like, as soon as CTX... You've always been a fan. Yeah. As soon as CTX came out, I wanted that on my car. Heat okay. reduction, I'm in. So, I told my dad, I was like, you know what? If my cousin can support his family for the past 15 years tinting windows, I can too. Right. And then, like, you almost saw, like, the light bulb go on in my light dad's head, bulb. like, ding. And he was like, you might be onto something. And I'm like, yeah, because I would do it like this. I would do it like... He was like... My dad was like, come on. Because he's always said I should open my own business or start my own business, but we never knew what to build it around. Something. I'm a, a hell, passion. I'm a hell of a salesman. You can't start a business being a good salesman. You have to have a, a product, a service, a something to sell. Right. A widget, something. So when I said that, just diarrhea of the mouth, my dad was like, you might be onto something. What about this we go back home did he say it or did you say it it, it was the conversation okay now also <laughs> as a side hustle in high school i had martin's mobile detailing okay okay so you've been in the so, automotive aftermarket industry for that, that, that's such I mean, an over exaggerated <laughs> way to say that <laughs> you've had, a, you've had a rag you had a rag you go we went to AutoZone. i was buying products at discount auto parts and then using <laughs> okay. them on people's cars so okay. like i'm not sure in the industry is the appropriate way to say that so my dad was like, come on, extrapolate with that. And I said, well, I would do this. I would do that. I would do this. I would do that. And he said, if you're serious about this, I'll back you. And I was like, okay. Mm. So we get back to, this is all in the car ride on the way home from lunch. Butterflies in the stomach. You're like, wait a minute. This no, because we're possibly, we're, a real... I mean, he's three, four Jack and Coke steep and I'm, okay. I'm three, four beers deep at this point. So there's not butterflies. It's just, we're flowing. And... So I send Liz inside, and I'm like, okay, we need to talk. Like, we need to talk. Like, let's talk serious for, yeah. for a second, because yeah, this is like, real life right yeah, now. Like, like, you just said you'll back me. What does that mean? Like, so we need to be on the same page here. Okay. And he said, like, I'll, I'll back you. And I said, okay, so if I call Penske, if I call United... And I call some of these other places where I've got irons in the fire. Like, I'm, I've am i got third interviews lined up set, you know. And these are reputable businesses. This is not like you went down to the streets but of I'm, Papa John's to deliver pizza. You're like, these are careers. Yeah, but I'm, I'm second interviews past. I've got third interviews. Potentially going to be deciding, like, which offer I want to take. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So you're, so you're way down the pipeline. Right. So if I call them and tell them, Hey, I'm starting my own thing. Go put. Just so you know, if you're telling me you're going to back me, that means you're going to be financially bankrolling the start of my company mm -hmm. to the tune of five figures. 
And then also paying my living expenses because like the crazy person that I am, I had at the time, no money in savings. I had 500 bucks in my checking account, had probably a thousand dollar check coming from enterprise in the next two weeks. But that that's it. So in the next 14 days coming up, I had $1,700, no savings. Okay. So starting a business, not a chance. Like, what are you doing? You're right. You have no savings, no nothing. You no. have to be prepared. Not a thing. Okay. So it was, I want to make sure we're on the same page. Like, if you tell me you're going to bankroll me, that means that that's living expenses, but then also the startup capital that I'm going to need to start the business, which is going to be five figures. And he said, I understand that, but if you're serious, I'll back you. Okay. Like, just... I want to make sure you understand I'm about to start spending money out of your checking account <laughs> like like I'm bleeding money. Right. And he's like, well, I get that, but it's a loan, not a gift. Like, I don't do that well. I, I do well <laughs> enough. I do well enough that, that I can it's afford. a loan, not a gift. I okay. can afford to loan it to you, but I don't do well enough that it's a gift. I need it back eventually. Touche. Bank of Dad, great interest rate. Okay. Great interest rate. <laughs> that being said... So I, I did that and then found window tent school, thought, okay, perfect. So I bought the LLC. I did many of the things that you highlighted in your starting a mobile tent thing, but I did it. Check it out at my YouTube channel, Patrick Lapman. Shameless plug. <laughs> so I did much of that, but also with zero industry knowledge. All I knew is that I liked window tent. Okay. <laughs> you didn't know about window film. You didn't know what a manufacturer Not was, a what, a, what a red dot was, nothing. Nothing. You're, you're a crazy person. Crazy person. So that being said, I, st I bought the LLC and then was like, okay, I just started Alligator Window Tent in detail. Should probably learn how to tent. Where do I go to learn to do that? Also knowing I learn best hands-on. So I need to find an in-person school. I know certain people learn online. Some people learn on YouTube. If you can do that, kudos to you. I'm working with my hands. I need to learn with my hands. Right, right, right. right. Th that's me. That's how I, I learned on YouTube. Okay. Like eight years ago, like that, two people were there. That sounds crazier to me <laughs> than the way I did it. Okay. So I find Window Tent School. I call up John, and you've talked to John, so you can understand. Why I me, think John's amazing. Well, you can understand why me and him get along. So I had missed the June class. It was already going. And Liz, middle of summer, you're, you're, Liz was out of town, so and we have dogs, so I couldn't just go to Jacksonville, right? But I could go for the day, so I drove up there because he was like, "Come on up, check out the facility, this, that, and the other." So I was like, "Okay, perfect." So I'm gonna go if if I'm gonna wait till July fifteenth, six weeks from now, to learn how to do this. this is the beginning thing, of June, right? Now, yeah, before June, June fourth, I bought the LLC June fourth. Okay, so if I'm gonna wait till July fifteenth. To go to window tent school and wait six weeks. If I'm going to do that, let's make sure this is the right place. Okay. So I take two and a half hours to Jacksonville. I don't care. Five minutes in, I know this is where I want to go. So that's where I met John. That's where I met Darren. At the time, DJ was their lead instructor who no longer can afford to go there because he's a monster. At window tenting? Oh, he's the test. By the way, I'm trying to get John and Darren. 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 Uh, I'm trying to get them both on the podcast. Like, I got a line up. You need to get DJ. Like, you are like... <laughs> you need to get DJ. You're, you're the beginning. Uh, just to let you know, you're the beginning of like a very big thing in my Fair channel. Enough. channel. <laughs> DJ's the Tasmanian devil. It's crazy. Like, he like zooms in, you see a whirlwind, and then all of a sudden like nine cars are tinted. And you're like, how did that happen? <laughs> DJ's a crazy person. He's the one that taught me. Anyway, so I, I go meet the three of them and I'm like, this is where I need to go. I go July 15th. I go for five days. I learn everything that you can learn in five days, which is great, but not what you need. Did you, was it was it, was this uh, was, it, was this tinting and advanced tinting, or were we talking business strategy and other things like that? Was they have a money marketing? They do. Uh, the, the, so the film school is involved over the, evolved over the past uh, three years. At the time, it was mostly tinting, a little bit about business. Um, John had talked to me about my background and I had kind of been open about my dad and, and my business experience and things like that. So he, okay. he talked to me a little bit more <laughs> offline. Um, oh, trust me. I'm not knocking this uh. over. So 
so I go July 15th. I go for five days. The trailer wrap I had scheduled for uh, to be picked up. The, so August 15th, I think at the time, was like a Monday or Tuesday or whatever. So that's the day that I picked up the trailer. So that's why it was open for business. Because I knew I can't wrap this trailer and drive it around and not be open for business. Right. So I had a month. Now, th- my dad usually has two cars, um, a sports car and a truck usually. And then my mom has an SUV. So I practiced on, at the time, my dad did not have a sports car and a truck. He had two pickup trucks. He had a daily driver, and then he had the big diesel that I now drive for towing the boat. So whatever truck he did not have that day, I would go get and bring it over to my friend's garage because my best friend has a 2,500-square-foot garage, so I could just go inside, no wind, perfect practice conditions. So I'd practice on my F-150. I'd practice on whichever vehicle my dad did not drive that day, and then I'd practice on my mom's car which at the time was a Mercedes ML. So it was four or five years old, but it was still a Mercedes. So like you're practicing on something. You're just grinding after you went to the school. Pretty much. Okay. But grinding on a Silverado, an F-150, and then a Mercedes SUV, where you're grinding on something with tighter seals and you're kind of learning a little bit about felt and... Repetition, repetition, repetition. That, but also tighter seal. Like the Benz was... I mean, right. if, if you've been tending for three days and you're working on an ML Mercedes, <laughs> you're like you're, crazy, there's bro. so many things you're that crazy. you're I'm learning. Like, well, I, you would have quit. I would have quit. I would be like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I tended to Kia Rio, my first car, six and a half hours. I spent five figures out of my dad's checking account. Okay, I can't okay, quit. Okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you may, could you imagine your dad? Hey, by the way, Pop, I fuck. I, it's yeah. just too hard. I yeah, quit. the ass kicking <laughs> coming my way. No. <laughs> you have, it's it's, it's uh, burn the boats. Right, you have to succeed. Kind of, yeah. You burn your boats. You know what? Great analogy. Yeah. Yes, burn you have the no, boat. you can't fail. I've I've heard that analogy. I love that analogy. Yeah. I've never heard it referenced in how I started my business, but very accurate. I mean, very. I mean, it's true. Look, look. So look. I started goosebumps for real. <laughs> I started my business. I opened my doors August fifteenth of two thousand eighteen. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're asking how did I get to where I'm at, my dad obviously makes enough money that he could loan me five figures. Mm-hmm. So he does well. Not well enough that it was a gift, but well enough to loan. Right. Now, just quick question. Is like like five figures like... Like, like 10,000? Like no, like 100? So he, oh, thought it, he thought it was going to be like 10. Oh. Okay. That was a unpleasant conversation. Okay. When he saw what the total was. Oh. Yeah. See, we won't you go say there. five figures... He thinks 10. You think 9. You no, mean somewhere no, in the middle. No, he thinks 10, and I'm thinking like 50, 60. Okay. So I spent so like... So that deep of a conversation didn't go... No. That, yeah. <laughs> Oops. That's Oopsie. not a fun conversation. <laughs> okay, keep going. Keep so going. nevertheless. But, so I'm there. Now, where I've gotten to faster than I deserve, and I say deserve because there's a lot of people that have put in a lot of time that aren't getting what I'm getting as far as my average dollar per car. They're not getting to work on the cars that I work on. Nowhere near. So except for me where the, where I say that the sun, the stars and the moon all align and like where you can't take one thing out of the equation. It's, it's the way I look at marketing. It's the way I look at professional business. So I look at, there's a big difference between a tradesman and a business professional whose business is a trade. Whereas I went to attack this as a business, not as a tinter where it's like, I'm done making money for this Patrick guy at Sun Solutions. I'm going to go out on my own. Okay, so repeat this again, because we've been friends for years, and I've heard this numerous occasions, and I Mm -hmm. love it every time you say it. So repeat it again. So window tinting is a trade. Mm -hmm. No different than tattooing, plumbing, electrician, anything that's a hands-on trade. And there's a tremendously large difference between a tradesman and a business professional whose business is a trade. For example, we all know someone where you're like, oh, God damn it, I have to call this plumber. Like, oh, I hate it. But then we also have a friend where like, dude, if you need like an electrician work, like my buddy owns a company, uh, dialed in, he's on point, like call him. And One guy does it. Well, I wanted to But like hates it. Yeah, but I wanted to be that, not... So anyways, I was attacking this based off ignorance, pure ignorance, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I had no experience, but I was like, I'm going to start a business. It's just going to be a round tint. 
but I'm going to attack it the way I see the market. I had gone down the Gary Vaynerchuk rabbit hole for like two and a half years before I went in the Navy or while I was in the Navy, the two and a half years before I came home. Okay. Implemented all that at Enterprise. And then it was like, oh, now I can like really run with this because now I don't have to deal with the bureaucracy, red tape. Just like it in. someone at Human Resources saying like you can't make a meme as an ad. <laughs> Things like that. So I'm attacking this in that direction. Now where I say the sun, stars, and the moon all have to align. So the the only really reason I bring up the fact that my dad was my startup capital is that let's take, for example, that my dad makes enough money to loan me said startup capital, okay, which means he runs in said circles. Okay. People that make five figures a year hang out with people that make five figures a year. People that make six figures a year hang out with people that make six figures a year, so on and so, so forth, forth. So forth. So some of the people I've known for quite some time make decent or what most people would consider considerable incomes, which means they have cars that I have access to based off like, oh, I'll give you a shot because you're friends with so-and-so. You're You're so-and-so's kid. Exactly. Okay. And that gets my foot in the door. For example, the Lamborghini Urus that I tinted a year into my business, which I know. (laughs) No shot. You have no business touching that car. None. (laughs) How nervous were you? Not because I had known the guy my whole life. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, okay, cool. So, so not, should have been, but not. <laughs> Ignorance. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. Right. So that particular gentleman has known my dad, has water skied with my dad for 30, 40 years. They used to pass me around on the boat with one of those life jackets with the handle oh, on Oh, you're like, here, here's yeah. your kid back. Yeah, with the handle on the back. <laughs> they used to pass me around the boat like that, depending on who was skiing. Oh. That's how long that guy's known me. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm over at my dad. We're cooking out over my parents. Now, when I say my dad, my parents are happily married like 40 some odd years, whatever. So I say my dad because he was the financial influence, but like my parents are happily married. So nevertheless, that's how long that particular gentleman's known me. So I'm over at my parents' house. We're cooking out. And I told my dad, I'm like, oh, you need to call Joe Smith. Like, I'd love to tint for him just because I know the level of cars that he he buys. Right. And he was like, well, just call him. Like, uh, I don't know Joe Smith like that. Like that. You do. He's not saved in my phone. Right. And if I text him, is it inappropriate? Because, like, now I'm soliciting. It's like business. Right. It's not like, hey, you want to go for a barbecue? Like, I'd love to, like, cook some chicken. Right. So my dad sends him a text. Hey, you know, Martin's doing his thing. He's gotten really good at it. You know, he's been doing it for a year. If you ever need anything, give him a call. Serendipitously. Like three weeks later. P.S. I love that movie. Sorry. Right. So like three weeks later, he calls me. Hey, I just got a new car. I was on like a two-year wait list for it. It's getting delivered to my house in a couple of hours. A couple hours? Okay. Can you do it? Yes. May I ask what it is? One of the first Lamborghini Aruses to hit Florida. Ah, I'll be there. And so it serendipitously, you know what I mean? Like, so I had no business on that car at that year, but I only got it because the guy's been friends with my dad for 30, 40 years. Now I've earned his business since because I did a good enough job. You do, you, okay. First of all, just let just so that everyone knows, right? I've known you for years. I don't I'm, do shit work. I, he does not do shit work. Okay, he does not. I've been there. I he's done work more where I'm like, mm, that should be fine, and he's been like, rip. I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to redo this fucking window again. So like, I've so got he, my standards. You got it, but because I'm a persnickety shit, right? As a person, but that particular gentleman gave me a shot because of connections. Otherwise, I would never. Because you have the backing of other people that the that. that he gave me a shot because I'm so and so son. Right. And you can't let that down. Exactly. So, but that opened a door for me because he races Porsches. And so that got me a couple uh, of the other people. It's like when, when, when you do one or two Teslas and they're all their friends with the Tesla group and they 100%. all, you start breaking into that. 100%. So my, my work speaks for itself, but also good work, business savvy, sales, sales ability. But it's not what you know to, you know, network too. So, so but, but I'm saying, like, the people that I network with or have grown up in those circles... Definitely helps. Helps. And 
Now I've earned those clients, but they all gave me a shot because I'm and now the business because is I'm running and rolling. Joe Schmo's kid. Right. They gave me a shot and I, then I earned my keep. But it's a shot that I it's an at bat I never would have otherwise had. So to discount that would be inaccurate to why I'm at where I'm at. So is that a scalable thing? Like maybe maybe Bob Barker from North Carolina doesn't have friends with dads with friends with Porsches, but they have cousins with friends with Altimas. Scalable is that that same situation is it possible with maybe either lower or higher because you can go higher than Lambo. That right? depends on marketing strategy, in my opinion. So, so it, it, it's marketing strategy, and it's also so when I started my business, it's not I, what you do, but what what people hear. What for you example, do. my starting price is one eighty nine for regular tent sides and rear. When I started my business and I needed every dollar, mm -hmm. I would turn down every job that said like, oh, you charge 189, there's a place up the street that'll charge 150. Okay, well, my price is 189. Now, that was painful to say, because I needed that. You needed the cut. I you needed, needed the money. that 150. Yeah. However, if you discount your price, then they refer, they refer at the discounted price and then tell their friends what they told you to get that discount. And then now that's the referrals you're getting. Whereas if you stay firm, even though it hurts, you're going to have a slower start, but then the referrals that come in are the ones that you want, not Hold the ones that you have to have. Hold your ground. A hundred percent. Now, was I able to do that? Cause I knew I had some financial backing. Sure. For what that's worth. So a little bit of comfort level. Didn't a have a little cushion. I didn't have a nest egg, but I had a safety net. But you weren't, you, you were being I, able to pay your bills. I didn't have a safety net or no, excuse me. I didn't have a nest egg. I had a safety net. Okay. So I was able to hold firm with a bluff when I really didn't For really have the okay. chips on my <laughs> end of the table. Okay. So there's that. And then it's marketing strategy. You know, what cars you're posting, you know, what you're doing. I go total Gary V. Like I based every business decision I made in the first year off, off of Gary V. Yes. I internalized it heavily. Audiobooks, podcasts, keynotes. I mean, deep down the Gary V rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. oh, for we both, two and, we, you and I have had conversations for like this two year. and a half years before I came home from the Navy. A That's year, all you did. A year and a half at Enterprise. And then now I get to really run with it, run in my own thing. And then, as a casual viewer, I'm watching a video of Matt Mormon introducing his channel to his new Z06 Corvette. In said video, where he just brought it home, like, hey, I just bought this car, just wanted to tell the channel about it. He says in that video, and at some point I need to get the windows tinted, just plans for the car. I had very light work that day. Oh, thank you. So I cold DM Matt Mormon. For those of you guys that don't know, Matt Mormon, it yeah. has a, a YouTube the, channel called Obsessed Garage. Yep. 350,000 plus no, subscribers. No, he's 260, 275-ish. Oh, fucking excuse me. So, but I had no idea. I just, I knew, I was a casual viewer of his channel. Knew he was a very picky individual. Very. By being a casual One viewer. out of two, even 200,000 less than a half a percent. Okay. Well, nevertheless. But no, I, a lesson, I, I, I was a very... math? Lesson. I was a very casual viewer. Okay, okay, okay. But he says he needs to get the windows tinted. I know he's in Lady Lake, which is like 45 minutes north of Claremont. Okay. He makes that video. I cold DM him on Instagram. In fact, I'll find it. Let's see. You have a, you have a message? A DM I don't, message? I, I delete nothing. From three years ago? I delete nothing. It was also the first time I'd ever engaged with him. So if I just go to the top, top of the of conversation, okay, okay. Like it's Valid what it point. is. Valid point. So, Matt, I just watched your video on the new Corvette. You mentioned you wanted to, the windows tinted. I would love the opportunity to work for you. I'm an Expel window film installer and computer cut on site. I live in Claremont, but would love to drive up to where you're at. Heck yes, let's do it. 
Talk about shoot your shot. <laughs> so I drive up there, <clears throat> talk to him about it. He asked me what film I use. We talk about kind of the business. He says, I'd like to interview you, mic you up, put you on camera. And I said, stop right there. That's not why I'm here. I said, I want to tint one car for you and please you because that means something to me personally. That's why I'm here. I'm not here to mooch off your social media following because I'm sure everyone's trying to beat down your door to get on your channel and I don't care about that. I want to please Is that you. how you actually are? Or was that like a back channel? Oh, yeah, too? yeah, yeah. Just because Windows... you just don't give a shit. Well, no, it's because window tenders are so shitty that they're always like, oh, you've only been doing this for a year. How good could you be? And I wanted to be like, eh, I pleased him. <laughs> right, okay. Like, that's all I wanted. So all you need is to please him. Like, yeah. you're, you're, his following means nothing. It, it really didn't. Okay. I just knew that I wanted to be able to please someone that's known for being that picky. I wanted to please them once... So that when people say, oh, you've only been doing this for a year, how good could you be? I wanted to be like, eh, I pleased him on that car. That should speak for itself. That's Done. all I wanted. Done. And he was like, fair enough, but I can make money off the YouTube content with ad rev and things like that. So like, I can profit off the video. So I'd like the video. And I was like, well, that's fine. I'm not opposed. If that's what you want to do, not what I want to do. I'm not opposed to a little spotlight. <laughs> But I just want to make it abundantly clear that's like, not why I'm here. Like, I'm here just because you're picky and I want to please you, A, to test myself, but also, you know. And then he liked me, took a liking to the way that I operate, the way that I run things. And then I've done considerable work from, more work from them and he's made four or five videos featuring would you say? Would you say you're exclusively the guy he would go for right now? Currently. Exclusive. Yes. Currently. Okay. It's but good. but he's always looking for the next best thing. Like, I get anxiety when he buys a new car because I'm like, am I going to be it or is he going to look for somebody else? Like, I I just don't think that because I've done previous cars for him that I'll do the next cars for him. Okay. Because he's always looking for something next. I mean, like, he he likes his high end. But you know. You know. I, I don't. You're like the side girlfriend. Like, you're, you're the it now, but you could be gone later. I mean, there's always... <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this three years. There's how many people that are better than me? I know Jesus. that, but not like you. I'm, I don't know if I'd say better. You're very good. For three years, you're very good. Maybe, but like maybe he meets someone. <laughs> Who? I, I, With the biggest swing of dick? Who? Like His network is huge. I, I, yeah, I guess you're right. I So, but I, I'm, I just don't think I'm entitled to his next cars because I've done his previous cars. Right now, okay, understandable. Understandable. But that's all I wanted, and personalities and bluntness and the, there, there's a couple of reasons why me and him get along but are you similar very similar th th in some ways yes in you, some ways you no. are the, you are mm. i'll say this i when we're talking about him i would say my friend matt at og he would say my friend martin at alligator we don't call each other to hang out on the weekends okay fair enough so so like he says business is an excuse to be in relationship. So I'm in relationship with him. Okay. He would say my friend Martin. I say my friend Matt. We don't hang out on the weekends. <laughs> it is what it is. It, and I'm not upset by that, but some people would be. If, if, if I said, like, oh, my friend Patrick. Well, when was the last time you saw him? Like, when we worked together. Months but, ago. like, some people Months would get... Ago. But I'm saying, like, some people would get upset by that. Well, what do you mean your friend? Like, if you're going to call me a friend, you're... Dude, like, we hang out. Like, oh, the, we were on the phone the other day, and I'm like... I uh hold on I got someone calling me goodbye click right like, I don't I don't say wait for you to be like okay I understand give me a call later I'm gonna be like so click we do the same thing but but all that being said so I had the ignorant balls to text him that a year into tinting windows because I wanted to prove to myself that I could and then it snowballed. And so that's another thing that's gotten me some of the cars that I've gotten to and some of the clientele that I've gotten to that some people be like, how in the hell do you do that in three years? Well, I had someone that's known for high-end pickiness put me on. Right. For no reason. Do you find it better? Like, was it a win? Or yes. is it a bigger, bigger pain in the ass at the end of the day? It's, because of the high intensity of, of pickiness. 
it's a 15 to 20 percent pain in the ass and an 80 percent this is badass it's a win it's a win yeah yeah so in a net net it's a win um but it does come with some persnickiness that most people would be like are you kidding me you want me to redo that but i'm willing to in a net net are you willing to do it because and don't take this the wrong way you haven't been doing it so long when you were doing it you weren't doing it for so long that you you were you didn't know that it was acceptable does that make sense? So if a guy that has been like me that's been doing it for more than five years and someone picked about one thing, I would so I would I would go back to there, there. There's probably ten to fifteen percent, maybe twenty percent, twenty five percent of that. But a like seven, hyper pickiness. Oh yeah, 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 hyper hyper. I mean, like I replaced a sunroof on a um, on an F one fifty Raptor. It was a panoramic sunroof, so two panels: panel mm-hmm. in the front, panel in the back. Mm-hmm. I replaced the rear sunroof for one speck of contamination See, i wouldn't do that like but did the, you do it because when forget about the reputation no 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 that particular gentleman is a thoroughbred entrepreneur he's a business mogul okay everything needs to be perfect not that the conversations i get to have with him while i'm at his house are conversations I cannot afford to have. There's eight, nine gatekeepers before you get to him, and then if you get to him, his hourly rate for what his time is worth is stupid. so much more than I can afford. But because he's a car enthusiast, and I'm a car enthusiast, he'll sit in his air-conditioned garage with (laughs) me while I'm tinting his car and chop it up with me about business for a couple of hours. That conversation is worth far more to me than the hour and a half drive to his house burning diesel. And having to redo it. Okay. That that see that makes sense because there's something so more. Is it a pain in the ass? Yes. Sure. Is it way more persnickety than anyone rightfully should be? Also, yes. But there's more value in it than that sunroof's square footage of film. That makes more sense. And my I fuel. Didn't, I didn't know that. I thought it was more like just a picky customer that was like, this this sucks. Well no, but so but in a, that's why I say in a net net, it's a positive. So like, do I deal with some things that like, or it's like, why am I dealing with this? Sure. But the cars that I get to work on, but the conversations with clients I get to have, like what people deep. don't see deep, like the conversations I get to have with Matt Mormon off camera. Ridiculous. Oh my God. <laughs> like when I tended his Tesla, we had conversations on camera. I tended one of his employees' cars at his house after that, and I got to pick his brain about business for an hour off camera about my new shop. <gasps> That's worth so much more. <laughs> so I, I came across I came across a theory. Not a theory, maybe a mindset. I don't know what to call it. So someone explained to me that you manifest what you need. Meaning, for example, when I went off on my own about two months ago, mm-hmm. day one, I think I called you too. Mm-hmm. I called you and I called Eric. Yep. I'm like, I need help. Like le- legit that day. You I, should have heard the conversation I had with Eric in November of I last puked. year when I was <laughs> frantic. Puking. I, that day I puked, not knowing what I'm going to do. And someone told me like, Stop worrying about the money because if you worry about the money, then the money will always be the worry and that will be your life. Yes. But if you stop worrying about the money and just focus on what you're doing. Chase passion. Ch- just be happy so, and do it and what you need will manifest. And later that week, like that was day one, like 930 in the morning. And that week I closed on 15,000. So, to, so because I'm an OG goon okay. and Matt Mormon has – not impacted my business in a, in a very positive way. He's impacted my life in a positive way. So there's a big difference between those two. So I'm a massive fanboy. That's why my whole garage is OG. So like okay. full admission, I know. He says, and I believe, people don't want your help. If they want your help, they'll ask you. So stop p- telling people you're getting into this because you want to help people with heat production film or car detailing or whatever it is. People want you to be passionate. So chase your passion. 
which is why I only do details if it's a ceramic coating. I don't do any type of door cups or edge guards or any type of PPF. I'm passionate about heat reduction film. I chase passion. Do you feel that that passion is what's fueled you? Like you, you've, you because just focus on the passion and the universe provides. Because it's authentic to me. All right. All right. We're back. Now that yes. the, all the camera batteries yeah. are, are refreshed. Yeah. Battery swap. The only thing. Yeah. The only bad thing. Yeah. yeah. And we've, we've crushed the second bottle of oh. wine. So <laughs> I, we, we both have overly full glasses, but. Yes. It's okay. That's a little bit above what we should be doing. Okay. So we have about. 40 minutes, I would say. Okay. Realistically. Hour so, and a half. Okay, so we've talked about um, my start, uh -huh. why I'm at where I'm at, because I think that, like, it's the sum of all things combined. Right. Like, it, like, is the way I do things, or is it the people I've talked to, or is it the people that have put me on? Like, I think it's all of those things combined. Like, if you take away Obsessed Garage, if you take away... My dad started blowing. If you take away the if way you take I, away all that, if you take are you a, a failure? No. No. I just could someone do it without that? Of course. You just wouldn't have I'm not the best at what I do. <laughs> I'm just the loudest, newest but you're person. Good at, no, you are very good at what you do. I'm not I'm, saying I'm not good at what I do. I'm saying I'm just very loud for as new as I am. <laughs> could someone reach the same success that you have reached without the the um without all the x factors thank you probably not yes but not as quickly probably not probably not probably not but like that's the facts and people are gonna get butt hurt by that but, but that's it's the truth real it's the truth like I, you know if i didn't have friends of my parents who make, i mean the the person that owns the earth makes i mean like stupid oh, it, I actually know what he makes, and yeah, it's a lot. But <laughs> to to discount that, to discount the the notoriety of a very public YouTube channel, not just public, but like what he's public for, like that makes a difference, right? Also, I'm always in my green polo shirts, which you can, always always on brand. You even yell at me about being not being on brand. Always, always. <laughs> So is it the fact that I show up in a polo shirt? No. Is it the fact that I send out handwritten thank you cards? No. Still, it, to this day. Absolutely. Even to friends. Like, people that are in my personal network, like, like friends on of your mine. In your phone? Yeah. Okay. You still get thank you cards. Okay. Because I want them to post about, like, wow, he didn't have to do this with me. My branded don't roll down stickers. Like, all those things. Reinvest your business. Are any one of those, if you take away any one of those things, does it negatively impact my business? No. But the sum of all things combined is why I'm at where I'm at. Okay. But to discount any one thing, I think is a disservice. So to say, to say you're only where you're at because your dad invested in your startup capital. Well, that's also inaccurate. Right. Because I agree. Some of Borrowing them. five figures from my father is not why I'm successful. Like, I still have to work my face off and produce a good product. Yes. At the end, it's not given. Right. Now, yeah, you have did to have that get ethic. my foot in the door that otherwise I never would have gotten my foot in the door? For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Without a doubt. So, did that get me access? Yes. But I had to prove myself once I had access. For example... Great marketing, if you have a shitty product, excuse me, if you have a shitty product, great marketing is only going to expose you faster. So great marketing is only good if you can also back it up with a great product. Because if you have a dog shit product and mm -hmm. great marketing, all That's that means very is, bad. All that means is that everyone's going to faster learn that you have a shit product. <laughs> so, but there's... Also, the, the, as we talked about during the, the Porsche, the, the Malcolm Gladwell, like, you know, the 10,000 hours, like, 10,000 hours. I live and breathe it going back to Matt Mormon. Same thing I've done. I mean, well, I, 
fucking yeah. I got a red dot on my goddamn you arm. Fucking idiot. The, biggest, the, only, the, the only thing dumber than that is <laughs> tattooing Nina somewhere on your body. Oh my god, I almost had champion tattooed on my knuckles once. I swear to God. And the school I went to was an M, and they had a number one for the rings. So the I and the M in champion would have been replaced with rings. If you were a radio station, <laughs> you would be all douche all the time. <laughs> That's a real that that almost happened. Yeah. Like legit talking could have been champion on my knuckles. Tune into Patrick Latman. <laughs> I'm all douche all the time. <laughs> so, but I, it, it's the sum of all things combined. And to take one thing away changes the whole equation. Right. So, getting access is one thing. Backing that up is another. But I was, I was originally. I think this is actually where we left off. So originally, I was very Gary V. Right. Then I got involved with Obsessed Garage. My intent was just to please him one time. But then I got involved. Okay. Oh, yes. We are, I think we are picking up where we left off. And so getting involved with that, I, I, I say a lot of Matt things. I'm, I'm, now I make all my decisions for the business as if I was at an imaginary table with Gary Vaynerchuk and Matt Mormon. And me? Gary Vee and Matt. <laughs> and what I think the three of us would discuss. And then I'd run that direction. Okay. Based the off. Cumulative knowledge. What I think the three of us would discuss. And I do that. And just let the chips fall where they may. So leaning into a couple of things. So if, if you pay close attention to the uh, GT4 video that we just did. You'll see three pictures in the back wall of my garage. One with Matt's M5 he gave away, one with his GT3 RS, and then one with his Civic that I tinted that he gave away. All three of those cars I tinted, and then he gave away the Civic and the M5. He still owns the RS. But I've had him sign those with the catchphrases that have inspired me. One says, do average elsewhere, because I just think that that's beautifully arrogant. <laughs> like, just, oh, you're doing average? Do average elsewhere. Do it elsewhere. Yeah. I, it's beautifully arrogant, and I love it. The other one says, stay in your lane. The GT3 RS uh, rendering says, stay in your lane. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a great thing. Like if you're I'm not chasing. in a good lane, no, but, but you're staying in that lane. For example. Okay. For example. Clarify. How many people in detailing are passionate about detailing, but everyone tells them, you need to get in PPF. You need to get in tent. There's money in this. There's money in vinyl wrap. But if you're not passionate about that, you're chasing the money, not your passion. So stay in your lane. You're getting out of your lane. Because you want the money, not the passion. Right. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, so you've told me that a few times. I'm like, so what if your lane the, sucks? And but like, well, then that find makes, it, I'm but, not but saying you, don't find another no, lane. No, 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 no. I'm saying stay in your lane, but, but if, in regards to your passion. If you're, so again, to quote Matt. I try not to quote him so much because people already accuse me of being too much of a goon. It's okay. But if you're lucky enough to find your lane, stay in it. Lean into it. Ride hard. Yeah. Then in the Civic poster, it says, people don't want your help. They want you to be passionate. People aren't booking appointments with me, paying my premiums, because... They need you. Right. Or because I'm trying to help them. It's because I'm a dork about this. Like, I'm a goon about... Now, you also don't have to be a genius to sell heat reduction film in Florida, so, like, there's that mm. also. <laughs> but also... Matt Blackmer yelled at me about that. He's like, he's like, let me see. Wait, hold on. You got DSP. You have Sun Solutions. Uh, you have the online presence. You're in Florida. Bro, they shut me down in November in Michigan, and I had to get my own shop. I'm like, mm, Yeah. I guess right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm so pumped about what you do with DSP just from what I know behind the scenes. Like I love it. <laughs> I love it. So it's gonna be it's I, gonna be. I, I know way. I know about upcoming things like the alligator pack. Um, oh, the alligator I, pack. We've yeah. been talking about that for years. Yeah, the exclusive stay alligator pack. Stay tuned for the alligator <laughs> pack and what it is. Here, 
I'm 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 gonna let the cat out of the bag. Oh, and he's gonna fight me on this. It's a premium. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna pay a premium for the luxury of it. The, yeah, I should just call it the Martin Pack. The Martin. No, call it the, the Fowler. That's what I should call it. Alligator. I, that that sounds good. The Alli- Fowler. No, Alligator was my DJ name. Okay, that's why I named the company the Alligator. Alligator Pack. That's why I'm sitting here like an idiot with only one, one headphone hit. on because hey. this is how I'm comfortable wearing headphones. He asked me, and I said, so, okay. What an Alligator Pack is with DSP is it is exactly how Patrick runs a bag of DSP. He sells the sample kit, which has how many ounces? Two ounces. Two ounces. The, sample, the, the starter set, not the sample kit. We don't okay. sell sample kits. Okay. Starter set, The two starter ounces. set, two ounces. And the way that you run it or how I run it has how much? Six to eight ounces. Okay. It's basically it's, a rosin bag from baseball. It's basically fill up the starter set bag with as much product as you possibly can and run it like that. That's how I use DSP, despite what the the live stream showed today. And that's just because I wanted to jab at him and mm-hmm, use dryer sheets mm-hmm. just because I I'm didn't a, say anything to be nice. No, no, that's because I'm a smart ass and I wanted to jab at him. But I'm like, mm. now to be totally transparent, I prefer dryer sheets because Expel can be a little bit tacky. Um, and I do work but on you quite. You know what's here's weird. I also Marco work on, Marco loves them. Yeah, but I also Marco work, loves DSP. Fair enough. But n- not everyone needs to love DSP. Some people, Just some people love sports cars. You couldn't write me a check large enough to get rid of my lifted diesel. There you go. There you go. True. True. But when I use DSP, which it is in my trailer, I have two alligator packs in my trailer. I, which he did pay full retail, by the way. A hundred percent, because I also believe in Matt Mormon that you pay full price. You pay what it is. What it is is. The way Patrick runs it is fill up the bag with as much product as possible, and I've been yelling at him for at least 12 months. At least a a year, legit. At least. where And it is coming. He will do this. The alligator pack is... He will do this. It is coming. It is the way he runs a pack. So basically, it's four starter kits in one bag. So the price will reflect one bag times... Eight ounces of product, so it'll be ridiculously expensive. But I it's, would pay it. It's I, the thing no, is, no. is it's a hundred dollars for the, the alligator. Kit. Here's here's, but it doesn't matter, right? I would rather have the option to purchase that okay. than not have the option. I, you know what? And I guess that's that's right because you can't sell, you can't force it down people. My thing was no, like force it down it, people, like. I guess they could make the alligator pack if they really wanted to, but that's how I run it. Right. But like, and but, you have, you have but if that's it. how you do it yeah. and how I do it when I use that product, which is not every day, to right. be fully transparent, it's not every day. Right. But when I use your product. But it will last at least four years on the shelves. Right. Shameless so, plug. Sorry. <laughs> so, but if that's how the product is used by you. Right. And used by me. Right. And used by your friends. Right. That should be an option to purchase it that way. And the price be what it may. Alligator pack. Yeah. Allig- what, what should we call it? What do you guys think? Alligator pack, alligator set, the alligator, the fowler. I, it should the be. The foulest. It should, <laughs> it should damn well be in a green bag. It's going to. Okay. Let, it'll be in a green bag exclusive. Kelly green bag. Kelly green. Like this green? Like this? Like, no, no. No, no, like, on, no right here, right here. Like. Like the color of my shirts that okay. I normally wear. Oh, I was wearing a shirt like that earlier. Yeah, exactly. Kelly green. I, I'm not saying sell it to people. I'm saying don't market it at all. Just pop it up just, on the site. It's just on the website. Don't market it. Nothing. Did you just, know? Did you know we are coming out with a DSP air freshener? I've had numerous requests for the. Why would you someone request that? A numerous. No, I'm not telling like like one or two. A number. No, the best one was the guy that said the DSP smells like a stripper's booty hole. <laughs> oh my. That's what the shape of that shitty air freshener should be in. It's they're like air freshener. Air, like uh, I mean, the numbers of people that are like make it an air freshener. Please make it, and I can, and we are. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it like a two or a four ounce spray bottle uh, that smells like DSP. Legit. Do not mail that to me. I'm mailing it to you. I'm gonna give you a whole job. I will throw it away <laughs> no, on <you> camera. <laughs> Oh my god, this has been so fun. I'm authentic, if nothing else. <laughs> but no, so I chase passion. Right. Like right, Matt yeah, says, yeah. people don't want your help. So so stop telling people you're oh, I'm trying to help. People don't want your help. If they want your help, they'll ask you. They want you to be passionate. People book me for the prices that I charge because I'm passionate about what I do. 
You're about it. I yeah. mean, you're a premium. So, are you so, the, are you the most expensive in your no. area? Um, I'm on the higher side of the average. Very close. I'm on the higher. There's a couple spots around town that that charge more for certain things, less for certain things. But on an average, I'm I'm on the higher side of the average. Um, not an accident, but people want you to be passionate, and they will book you for that. And so. I, and again, to parrot Matt, and, and I apologize for everyone that always hears me talk about or sees me in OG shit. <laughs> but I, I really believe, like, people don't want your help. They want you to be passionate. If they want your help, they'll ask you. If I need your help with something, Patrick, I need your help with this. We'll okay. Come to you. Exactly. But if you're tending my windows, I want you to tending my windows it. because you're passionate about That's tending true. windows. That's true. That's true. If I, if I want, like, my walls painted, I want someone who loves to do it. They're like, bro. Right. Me. I got you, bro. I got you. And if someone is that passionate about it, you will pay what they charge because they're going to do a better job because they're passionate about it than someone that's chasing money. True. Don't pay. Don't. The end of the day, don't chase the money. Chase the passion. Mm -hmm. The money will come. Mm -hmm. the, the money is yeah. a byproduct of the passion. Right. Would you agree? Yeah. Ooh, that's a t-shirt. No, it's I not. I think it's a t-shirt. That's a t-shirt you shouldn't sell. That's a t-shirt that says alligator, and then underneath it. Like My t-shirt that says nice tints is a better shirt, <laughs> which I almost wore today, but because we're on a podcast, I was like, mm. well, listen. I'll, we're trying I'll, to be respectful. I was, uh, that's right. why I, I stayed on brand in a polo shirt. <laughs> I'm very excited. Thank you very much. Pretty, I mean. You're you're obviously a good friend, and you oh, thank me, you, thank you, you for drinking two hundred fifty dollars uh, of my oh, wine. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll get a sip of that for you. <laughs> Since I made the eight hundred and fifty dollars on the Porsche, today. hey, hey, I did nothing. <laughs> yeah, but you'll make the ad rev. I did nothing. Uh, don't worry about that. We don't worry about that. What? Okay, I'm what, not worried about it. I do don't you, care. Do you watch Joe Rogan? Yeah. Okay. A lot. I love in Joe the Rogan. truck. Okay. As you want to know some honest? And I'm the just, only reason we didn't watch Joe Rogan on the way here is because Matt posted a video today. Again, apologize. Mm -hmm. Matt posted a video featuring a question I asked. Him. And so we watched that on the way here because I'm a dork and I wanted to see what he said about me. By the way, he has Apple Play in his truck yep. set up. I was so, like, what the fuck is going on? Do you have that? So if anyone has seen my rig or pictures of my rig, I drive a Chevy 2500. It is a high country I have it totally debadged, so it's a sleeper. But I did pay about two thousand dollars to have Apple TV and Apple TV is amazing in there. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. No, I literally have an Apple TV and a Wi-Fi hotspot buried under the dash. I, I asked, if it, I, I asked if it was standard. I'm like, is this standard? <laughs> like, I need to get into these things. No, it's about two thousand dollars at a custom shop, and so yeah, I have an Apple TV and Wi-Fi, and we watched YouTube on the way here. I, I I'm just realizing, just right now. That I've never watched the end of a Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, sad face. I've never watched the end, and I'm just realizing this in real time. I've never watched the end of any podcast. Therefore, I have no idea I have no idea how to end this podcast. <laughs> Do we just stop? Do I thank you? I'm how clearly <laughs> deeper in the podcast world than you are. Um, based, have, based off the fact that I don't go to sleep during the podcast. I have and so no idea. You let me know when we need to end it, and I will end it. I, I, okay. I think we're close. Here's the thing. It's like, it's like an entree I, or an appetizer. I want to I I feed people, but I want to We've I been on camera for over an hour. This is a damn entree. This is a very good entree. I think so. I think the people that watch this are going to love it. And the people that don't watch it, fuck them. Because they're not going to watch it anyways. I don't give a shit. I, I think <laughs> some people that are going to watch this are going to be rubbed thoroughly the wrong way by the way I come off. That's okay. That's the point. I'm not worried right? about no, it. Here's the point. The people that are going to be on this podcast are going to be who they are and how they are. And, and you're going to get an, an opening on how you are. So, you are. This is you. So this being said, that being said. Mm-hmm. 
you live an hour and a half to two hours away from me. It took me two and a half hours. That's because you went the wrong <laughs> damn way. You need to listen to me on directions. I've lived here my whole life. I stopped at Wawa. I got a gas. I went to the gas station. I went. To, I stopped at Wawa That's, and I walked through the door and the damn del- deli was shut down. The first words I said was the only fucking reason the, I came the, to this goddamn the, gas station. The, <laughs> the stop at Wawa is not why it took you too long. It's because you didn't listen to me on directions. It's okay. That being said, mm-hmm. if you want to hear me or me and Patrick discuss particular topics. Post comments somewhere wherever Patrick decides um, whenever this goes live. Yes. Put it under the video. He lives less than two hours from me. Two and a half hours. Every time I've driven from your house to mine, it's taken me an hour and 40 minutes. You know where you're going. I didn't know where I was going. I also drive fast. Uh, yeah, I have a four banger. You have a fucking ridiculous truck. That we were going 95 down the goddamn road. I haven't seen 95 since 95, okay? Like, I don't go that fast. Next time, I'll <laughs> get the Porsche. I I legit, like, I seatbelt. By the my, way, my, my, when I say the case. Porsche, I'm referring to my dad's. I do not make money like that. I do decent. I do not make. Not yet. I do not make 911 money. Five minutes. Five minutes. Not even five minutes. Future goals in the next five years. Oh, five minutes for the next five years. Give me your next goals in the next God, five years. Ready? Fucking corny. I know. I love it. I just thought about it right now. I'm amazing. I'm the best. I'm the yeah, best. You should make bumper stickers. Oh, or my Hallmark God. cards. Oh, my God. Go. Five years. What do you want to do? My goal. What, what year is it? 2020. By 26. So, no, no I, I. So there, there's a couple things. First of all, if you don't have a five year plan, you're already there. So, and yes, that's bumper stickery. Oh. But. <laughs> I know. Just, just I know. I know. I <laughs> know. Just yelled at me. The cheese that comes out. <laughs> so there's that. Also, I don't like putting such tight timelines. My my major goal is before you die, because you're so old. Right. Exactly. And and short. And, and, and at four foot two. <laughs> so <laughs> for the record, I'm five foot six. Okay. So, let's reset the clock. He's five foot six. And how much do you weigh? Legit. 195. 195. Trying five, to get down to 185. Five foot six. I, I need to keep up with my girlish figure. I'm trying to get to 185. You got to eat egg white sandwiches and, and grilled cheese. That's what I mean. That, that, grilled that's grilled chicken. Nut. So I used to weigh 250 pounds at five six, And so health is a whole nother topic we can go on. I love you. So um, the other thing, my big goal is not to build something to exit. My big goal is to eventually operate my business not work my business. Going back to the way we started this, whereas instead of going business into business with someone who has a different mindset on how to run a business Mm -hmm. and not wanting to fight with them because I just see it different. My goal is to operate my business. Currently, I'm working my business. I'm the only employee. I'm doing everything except my my SEO, my website, and whatever. John does all that. So John Dewar, the owner of the Window Tent School, also owns a company called Modern Media Geeks. He builds websites. He does SEO optimization. He does all my Facebook ads. I implicitly trust him. He's amazing. But for the most part, I do everything myself. My goal is to operate a business. That's been my goal from the start. However, that's where I differentiate. There's a difference between a tradesman and a business professional whose business is a trade. I view myself as a business professional. My business is just window tint. My goal is to operate a business, not just be a tinter for myself. Which now, most people are. 85% of correct. And it's also employee people just pay for themselves. And to be fair, it's a super difficult category to go and make that leap to be two people, not one. Like, that's a super hard thing to do in our category if you have the standards. That you have. Exactly. You're a fucking psycho. That's true. I'm a crazy person. (laughs) Just to let everyone know, I am very cocky, not confident. I'm going past the line in cocky when I tint cars. I'm I'm really fucking good. I'm a half a step behind arrogant. I get very nervous tinting a flat glass all day long. I'll tint with him all day long in flat glass. Cars, I get very nervous because Mar- Martin doesn't fuck That's around. Probably why you filmed probably. me instead of joining me. Probably yes. Yeah, and just it was also, know, that's also just a hundred and twenty thousand dollar car. The car, I know, the, cars, I know. the guys had the, for a month. The windshield, the windshield, 
like the 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 razor blade. If you razor blaze it, it would never been an issue. Just to let you know. Just saying. That's fine. I think I think it would have been. I think. Maybe. Maybe. No one else knows. I have no idea. But I, I don't know. You're probably know. right. Maybe. I think so. Because there's more than one way to skin a cat, and I don't know everything, so you're probably I absolutely don't, I, right. There is, it's the best way I've seen. Listen, the guy that taught you that, I watched him do it yesterday. Amazing, right? Insane. And he squeegees as he does it. Yeah. I do it and then squeegee afterwards. If you guys don't know, I'm talking about the Triumph Blade in shoved inside the side swipe to clean yeah. front windshields. Fucking insane. And I, the, the the cleanest windshields I've done ever. I'd I'd rather do a windshield twice than handle a triumph blade like that. <laughs> really? Truly? For cars, yeah. Are you what, what what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of cutting yourself? No. Damaging the car? Damaging the car. Scratching? I do a lot of cars with leather wrapped ashes. Brand new. Brand new blade. Every time brand new blade Will never. Not, not, are you are you afraid of scratching the, the glass or scratching the car? The car. Don't don't just don't. Just don't. <laughs> just yeah, don't. Thanks. thanks for that. <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Oh, you're worried about that? Just don't do that. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're worried about sweating in Florida when you're walking from the back of the parking lot to the restaurant? Just, just don't sweat. Just like, don't, thanks for don't that. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. I'm just saying you appreciate can, that. You can't control what your body does. You can control whether or not you cut something. Just don't cut something. I can't control the you car that I'm working on. That's true. Okay. And I'd I'd rather do a windshield twice than damage cutting someone's out. You should try it. Leather try down. it. Try it. It's I've really. I've done it. I, mm. I've done it. Mm. I have tried it. Super flat windshields, Silverados, F-150s, things I'm not Did worried it about. Work out? It didn't work out. No, it was fine. Just. You're dipping your toe and getting more comfortable so that you'll do it later. Okay, so let's take today, for example. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to do it, but I didn't do so it because of you. Today's client. You scrubbed it. Today's client. Obsessed garage client. Yep. $120,000 car. Uh-huh. Less than a month old. Uh-huh. What are you afraid of? You're, you're afraid of scratching the glass or you're afraid of I'm cutting the edges? I'm because afraid that of, knife is ridiculously sharp. Yeah. So Alcantara lined mm -hmm. everywhere very tight this particular portion we did today did not have the leather wrapped ash but if it did my spidey senses go wouldn't you want to go quicker i don't care about time no no, no I'm, I'm more efficiently if you do a windshield twice it's more water than if you did it once would you agree i don't use enough water to where that matters that's true my ma my water management is good too i use a lot of slip me too like there's there's times where I, I'll lay a door on, and I'll still be able to do it. Like I'll still be able. To after be the able fact, after you squeegee, me too. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and uh, you should see so how much, much you should see how much slip is in the bottle that I have. So much slip, it, it's 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 um. What's the word I'm I looking ha for? I have a squirt bottle that's even got heavier slip. <gasps> I. It's like 20%. Offensive. It's like 20%. It's offensive. Like yeah. so much slip, it's offensive. People are like, what the fuck it's, are you it, doing? It's like 20% Wait, hold on. on. Like a spoogies? What's in the spoogie? No, no, it's like 20% on. Yeah? yeah I, it's, love it. it's, <laughs> I love it. It's it's gnarly. All right, how do we end this? Tell me. Okay, we're done. I think so, we're done. We're, we're done? End it. We're, no. Let's end it, like gentlemen. So we've had, okay, first of all, this has been a great first episode. Martin, thank you very much I for would being say, here. How do we I end would this? say since since this is episode one, one, right? So the first, so hopefully, you, you first have of no, thousands. So you have no. I don't know what I'm doing. You have no style that's been established. I'm thinking of a name. No, don't worry about the name. The name I'm will saying, come. No, no, no. I'm I'm saying from a content standpoint, mm -hmm. you have no style. You have no. This is how this is done. This is this is how I started. No, 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 this no. is so, how I started window tinting business. By the way, I have no clue what the hell I was doing. Fair I enough. just did it. That's why it works. Okay. That's why it works. Because I had no idea what I was doing when I started. Either. What do we do? I would say that since this is episode one, mm -hmm. leave comments on this video. Please. Would you like more conversational things like this? Or would you like topics addressed? Ooh, that's, I like that. Now, if you want topics addressed, what do topics? You, do you, what topics do you want? And who would you want or possibly not want to hear those topics from. For example, if you want to know, like, I think it, we could do a, an entire podcast just 
from a me and you standpoint, we could do an entire podcast on the fact that I built my business mobile, but I'm going brick and mortar and like what the hell changed. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the same route. I'm, I'm in the exact same route. Keep so we could do a whole podcast on that. Mm -hmm. And I think not for fear of sounding like I'm patting myself on the back. I think I'm a good candidate for that particular topic because I built my brand for the past three years off being mobile. And now I'm going to transition next year off being brick and mortar. So what's changed? Why? Things like that. But if there's a topic and then who would you like to hear that from? So, for example, because I'm an expel goon, what takes someone from running a shop to going corporate? Right? Like, like Dean would be a great guy for that because he used to own a window tinting business and then now works for expel. Then there's also Rick Coslow from 3M. Rick Coslow was the king of PPF. Was is still is the king of PPF. Went to Accent that's 3M. Of, that's out of my category. And then came back. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Same. Similar. Uh, Sorry. A great thing. Um, but also like, you know, um, I don't know if he would do it because he's that busy. Eric might be able to Who? Um, make the introduction. Well, you know him, but like Eric might be able to set it up. Um, maybe, maybe Chris Hardy from Expel. Again, expel goon. Chris Hardy. Sorry, uh, that's a different story. No, no, no. But but he owns a window tinting business. But then also, is it the same Chris Hardy that you and I had a conversation about? The same. Okay, the one that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That guy. Little sto la story for later. Yep, yep. <laughs> but his story is interesting. I've talked to him offline. His story is interesting. Would I get a meeting? No, no. But I'm saying like I I don't know. I'm, and nor am I going to be the one to make that introduction. Just to let you guys know, if you guys don't know, like I'm branching so, out within Florida, so but I do plan on flying out other places. Exactly. So what topics are interesting? What topics do you want to hear expanded on? Mm -hmm. But also, let's look for who can bring the most value within that topic. And that's the important part. It's like we're not shooting shit just to like... Let, people need to get now some if you want to just hear me value. and patrick shoot the shit bullshit like, for two hours that's <laughs> i will another bottle I of wine spend the money on wine like let's send it because the amount of time we could spend on this podcast if we didn't have porsche videos to delete first like uh, oh my god ridiculous but, I, need, I need bigger ass that's it i thought I, I got big enough they go up to like this is 64 gigs they go up to like ridiculous oh yeah they go 500 gigs for I like know. 200 okay which was that worth it i'll okay. buy them okay <laughs> so but there there's people that have particular like i personally i would love to hear sean um sean roach um window tent warriors up in new york i spent more time talking to him at the expel dealer conference last time they had it than, than anyone. anyone his story is interesting his thoughts on business are interesting he had one bay, had a partner. Now he's on his own. Doesn't believe in partnerships. Now he's doing very I kind good. of agree with him. He's doing fantastic. I very agree with partnerships. Keep going. But he disagrees with partnerships, and I agree with him. I don't I don't I don't agree with partnerships. Okay. Like perfect. you need so, you need power. No, no, no. You need but control. I'm, I'm saying though that like his story is interesting. Where he's at is interesting. He's expanded, which is interesting especially in New York, especially during these times. He's got his iron. He's got more than one iron in the fire. He's an interesting cat. I'd love to talk to him. I'd, I'd love to go one-on-one -on -one because Sean's a cool I, dude. I've never, I'll be honest with you. I've never had a, I've had a, con a brief conversation in passing when we were both were at an event, but that was the extent of it. Like I've never sat down and, and I don't want to say this the wrong way. And I could, I could be right. or it could be wrong. He comes off very arrogant. So do I. But yes, uh, yeah, and that's the thing. I know you, like, right? And I feel, and I don't want to churn up. I don't want to churn my things My favorite up. saying from Obsessed Garage is do average elsewhere. <laughs> I don't, okay. And I don't mean it in a wrong way, right? Because a lot of people are going to take things that I say in a wrong, I, I'm the worst at delivery. Who in window tinting, PPF, or car detailing that's actually good at what they do isn't arrogant. Is doesn't come off as arrogant. I'd love to sit down with them like one-on-one -on -one for an hour or two and like really have a conversation with them. I've never sat down for they're, more they're, than five minutes. There's flights to New York every day. Every day. 
Every day. They might not let me out with the new fucking Delta virus. The Delta variant. We won't go. What's it? <laughs> but there's their flights to New York. All Every day. No, I, I would love to sit down with them. I love because you know what? It's not that I I don't not like other people. I I, like, I, 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 I I go deep into what I don't know. I would find value in hearing what you ask him. I, what and I this is someone I can, I can I, text I, or call. I want this podcast to be out on the table, whatever it is. If you feel a certain way and a certain manufacturer or a certain person doesn't like that, I don't give a shit because you're my guest. Well, so there's certain things that, that, you, that you can't do, and there's certain things that you can do but repetitive. So Eric, Tim Wiz, has done a phenomenal job at interviewing a lot of people. Okay. He has asked a lot of questions, but there's a lot of questions that he has not asked. So, for example, he's had me on. Okay. Our conversation has been different than the conversation I have with Eric. Okay. Good or bad? Just different. Okay. No, no, one's not. Okay. It's, it's a conversation. Like, is it It's conver- all different. Exactly. All different. There's, not, there's not one way to skin a cat. His, Eric has had Sean Roach on his podcast. Your conversation with Sean would be vastly different than Eric's. You know what I mean? If if you had if you had the same guest list on your podcast that Eric had on his, the information would be vastly very, different. Vastly different. Your motives are different. Your business is different. Your reason for podcasts is different. Your location is different. The fact that you're doing it in person, not on Zoom or Skype, is different. So everything's going to be different because there's different perceptions, which is why I say that, like, for example, I'd like to see you interview Dean. I'd like to, I'd like to see you interview Sean from uh, Solar FX. Oh, that would be a good one, too. Yeah. I, want, I want to do everyone. I really do. No, like, no, no. I, but I want to sit down with people and see what they are and how they are in real life. Right, and, and so I'm an expel baby, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> through and through. All day. Currently. Like, I, I don't see it changing. I just, when I say currently, it's just because you never know what the future holds. Don't but backpedal. It's okay. No, it's not backpedaling. Just tell them, it's just tell them like, how you feel. I'm, I'm an expel baby. Tell them, I expel, make no listen. Apolo- I make no apologies. <laughs> but no, expel treats me like family. That doesn't mean that people in the industry that don't use that particular product can't find value from talking to someone who created a film brand. Right. But that's a different conversation than someone like Sean Roach, who runs a a business, a business. That's which a I very, agree because I'm completely different. But that's a very different conversation. Him and I are very similar. Online presence. He's much uh, bigger. Uh, he's he's just different. He's ten years ahead of me. But but the conversation that you would have with Dean would be very different than that. The conversation that you would have if Chris Hardy would do it, would be different than that. Very corporate. 100%. But I think there's value in understanding the corporate side of things. I, I, I agree. For example, one of the most valuable conversations I had at the last Expel Dealer Conference, so the person that brought me on to Expel, who has since been promoted, he now runs the Expel division that sets up Expel at dealerships. So the conversations that I've had with him offline where I'm asking him, like, what do you think about the fact that, like, some people get butt hurt about, like, oh, now you're tinting at this dealership. That takes money out of my pocket. Mm. Hearing the corporate side of that. But can they? Would they? Would they even take me as a meeting? Like, cause No, probably not. But Because they can't say it. No, because it just the the it heat, would hurt them. The heat that they would get in backlashes is, is more than it's, it's worth. Very difficult. I don't care. I don't want to tent for dealerships. I do. So it doesn't bother me in the least. But hearing the corporate side of things is never a bad thing, right? Right. What is the most most window tent businesses? Be it the owner, be it the employees, be it the whatever. There's always a division between labor and management. Always. So call it dealers. There were labor and they went to management and then there's like, what do you do? How do you balance it? it? Call it dealers and corporate, call it management, labor, call it what you want. But there's like these two sides of the fence 
and like they never seem to get along. Right. However, if both understand each other, there's mutual respect, mutual growth. And so they, everyone can go. To quote Gary Vee, my other big influence, bullshit entrepreneurs will bitch about the way they want it to be instead of reacting to the way that it is. Mm, I like it. So if if you're a, for example, Lumar dealer mm. who gets a lot of heat for, oh, we have our dealers here, but we're opening up in-house dealerships here, and then all of a sudden the butt hurt comes. If you understand where they're at and they understand where you're at, then it's, okay, how do I react to this instead of just being like, well, they're doing this. Okay, well, there's that get you. So if you understand where your film manufacturer is corporately and you understand how that fits or doesn't fit with you and you react accordingly, that's going to be way more positive for your life <laughs> than being butthurt about it. So and bitching. Getting, right. So if you can get people that are corporate, mm -hmm. If you can get people that are own their own business, if you can get people that are dealers, if you can get like getting all these points of view from people in a conversation like this, I think that's where it brings value. And that's where I say, what topics do you want to hear? So based off what topics do you want to hear talked about? Listen, that will guide who do we go get? Yes. And yes. Now, yes. Okay. 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 So we're, mold we're molding this. I like this. No, 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 no. And so again, I'm episode one, more friends. So we're kind of talking this out also, but like, I think where I think about it is where can the value be brought there? There's value into like the way I see the market because I see things as a crazy person because I came into this totally ignorant right. to the industry, but it's good. Some people say yes. Some people say no, but the way I look at things because I came in totally ignorant to the industry has made me look at things differently. It's made me disruptive. It's made me enemies. It's made me friends. Right. It is what it is. When, you, when you're like that, no one's on the fence with me. No one's on the fence. Either people love me because of my energy or they hate me because of who I am. But that's why I go back to there is no such thing as competition. There's only other people that do what you do. Oh, I love it. That's the so, t-shirt. That being said, there's something to be learned from corporate people. There's something to be learned. So there's something to be learned from someone like a Sean Roach who yeah. is expanding their business. There's something to be learned from a Mike Burke who has turned him his name into a brand and a mogul. There's something to be learned from me who is a three-year greenhorn. There's turn, something. turn success story. Okay, I would say that. I would call it that. Would you call it that? Would you agree? A little bit. Are you paying your bills? So far. And everyone's good? I would say so. I, I'm trying not to pat myself on the back. <laughs> I'll pat you on the back. Fair enough. <laughs> There's something to be learned from John at Window Tent School who teaches people regardless of film brand. There's something to be learned from Darren who not only co-owns the Window Tent School but also owns a car customization shop. There's something to be learned from DJ who's the one that taught me who is a the Tasmanian devil. In an hour. Like, we, this should be an hour. Like, you're the exception to the rule. Fair first, enough. First, but, first but, there, but there's something to be learned from all these categories. So it's like, what categories are going to bring people the most value and then figure out who do we ask? Oh, I like that. So based off the topic of... So what topic do you want to hear discussed? Are you looking right there? Yes. Okay. And based off that topic... Who's the best person to go after for that? Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay, let's... Okay, wrapping up one more time. Repeat what you just said. So, moving forward, drop a we're, we're, we're going to... We're going to... We're shaping how I'm gonna we're going to do this. I'm going to take his job real quick. Yeah. I'm going to take we're his job We're shaping how we're doing this podcast. So, yep. So, I'm going to take his job. Go. Ready? So, go. Based off this interview, based off biting Joe Rogan style. Mm -hmm. All day. All day. I love Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's why we're drinking. Oh. Yeah. So what top comment below, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, the business page, the window tending business, whatever it's it is, probably good, YouTube, just gonna be YouTube, whatever, <laughs> comment below what topics would you want to hear discussed and or who should be gone after to mm. hear that side of things. Tell me. So do you want to hear about someone 
for example, someone who I consider a mentor, uh, Sean with Tent Man Window Tinting in Florida. So shout out to you, Sean. Mm, Sean. Yep, you know. So someone like that who has been tinting since he was 14 years old and grown to three brick and mortar locations and has bigger plans that I won't discuss because I've not talked to him about any of this. But nevertheless, I look up to him. So never. So, would you want to hear about someone who has multiple brick and mortar locations and then go to him? Would you want to hear about someone who, like a Mike Burke, who has been tinting for a long time and has turned his brand into a thing that other people are buying into, even though Eric has done many interviews with him? Do you want to hear from someone who's gone from mobile to brick and mortar? Do you want to hear from someone who's gone from brick and mortar to mobile? Do you want to Some hear- have. Yeah. Do you want to hear from someone who's more corporate? Do you want to hear from someone who's gone from corporate to now like, hey, listen, I'm done with that. I'm going to do my own thing. And then based off those topics, who's the best person to go talk to about that? Those are the things that are interesting. We all know how to put stickers on windows. That's all we do. With as little contamination as possible, <laughs> blocking as much heat as the customer can afford. But like, where does it go from that? Or do you just want to hear Patrick shoot the shit with someone who's in window tinting and then talk about life? You know who the best person is I want to do? Mitch Goldman. Who's that? Mitch Goldman is... Forgive me. Mitch, Gold, Mitch Goldman has been in the game for years. Mitch Goldman showed up showed up to the last tent off with a with an, with a red dot and a, and a, and a hard card and made it into the finals and made it to fourth place almost was uh ranking in in, in the uh in the uh, third second and first yeah ridiculous I'll, I'll tell you for example someone who i'd be curious to hear a sit down like this not a produced not a thing just raw raw the um fuck what's his name oh. excuse me um the texas guy Carlos. Yes. Carlos, the, the, te the Texas squeegee. Yeah. Carlos. Yes, that guy. <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> I'd like to hear him sit down this raw. It's really weird. Not produced. I've sat with him. Non-produced? Different. He's very cool, calm, collective. So I love his so, style. So yes. I'm, I'm going to throw that out there. I love it. I love I it. I want to hear a raw conversation yes. like this yes. with <laughs> him. Because you zone out about everything else. And you just you you end up like doing this, right? Because I don't get into the theatrics. That's and, not me. No, and that's okay. It's not for everyone. A hundred percent. He's got his thing. He's he's doing way more. Just to let you know, he's doing way more than I'm doing. There's two of the major things for online. There's education, and there's entertainment. There is a shit ton of people who do but education. But even within entertainment, he's the only one doing entertainment. No, no, no. his entertainment is different than my no, entertainment. No, and that's true. But entertainment is still entertainment. You get but, a, the but, man has grown a YouTube channel that's almost eight thousand deep. I want to I want to hear someone pick his brain. Behind the entertainment. Ooh. His old lady's part of it. Okay. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd love to hear more She's about that. She's amazing. I'd love to hear more She's about amazing. that. amazing. Okay. Good. Okay, let's wrap it up. Last three minutes. So, last two minutes. Yep. Last two minutes. So, I'm going to take over his job. We're going to wrap this up. <laughs> Comment below. What topics do you want to hear discussed? And what industry person do you think would be the best to then discuss it with? Yes. Yes, do that what below. What brings value either business-wise, entertainment-wise, content-wise, yes. corporate-wise, run your own business-wise, expand your own business-wise? What topics bring the most value in conversations like this? And then who's the best person to then run that into a corner with? Oh, I love it. I love it. I would say that mine would be more just shoot the shit about well, we just can. general window tint in life. Because I'll drive over to Tampa or I'll, I'll just keep paying for Mr. Good, wine, <laughs> good wine and dinner. At a good place. Mr. Fowler, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Indeed. Uh, it's been a phenomenal. Indeed. Oh, my God. Is this real crystal? Did you hear that, Ting? No, but I do have four of these at my house. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much again. Actually, the ones I have at my house have my name etched on the back. <laughs> That's how often you bougie I bougie bitch. 
I am kind of a bougie shit, but like <laughs> this is my favorite restaurant, and I do know the people, and so they do. This, this is how we got a whole private room, by the way. Yeah, this, this place is enormous, and this is a private room just for us. Just yeah. so, you, thank I, you. I did text the manager. To yes, ask thank you. I appreciate it. So thank you very much for everyone that's watched, and um, I really don't know how to close this out. No, we're we're about to order food because we didn't want to eat on camera oh, okay. and on mic. So look, over we're here. gonna close look over out. Here. Look over here on this camera. We're gonna close out. Because we're about to order some food and dessert, so we Ooh. weren't eating on mic. So, everyone, have a great rest of the day. Put stickers on windows, block heat, block light. Ooh, love you. Love someone else. We'll talk soon. Thank All you right. very much, Martin. And I guess... <laughs> I don't know. There's like a... a